What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Five Rounds. I am John Ramdean alongside the returning Robin Black. Got to give a shout out to my man, Cody Saftik, for filling some big shoes last week. Um, how are you? I'm good, man. You were yep. in Vegas. Yep. You were in Los Angeles yep. hanging out with some very important people. Before we get to uh, a number of the fight cards, because... It's it's busy from from now till I think forever. <laughs> yeah, forever. Uh, I think um, February. There's at least three UFC fight mm -hmm. cards. Uh, we're heading to Vegas at the end of February, yeah. and I think there's at least uh, three yep. fight cards in March. Two oh nine. We're going to be in Vegas for UFC two oh nine March fourth. How the fuck is Nick and Nate Diaz not on UFC 209 and how in the world is this show not in Stockton or somewhere around San Jose? You know what? I know. These you are the things that happen. These are the things. Uh, hey, Nick, we'd like to offer you you know, uh, Damian Maya. That's I'm bullshit. just making that up. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I want big fights, yeah. bro. I like Damian yeah. Maya, but yeah. he's not going to make me yeah, a lot exactly. of money. So people, we often do get into discussions, and so do other fans like us. Because we're needs, fans. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. This guy needs to fight Khabib. Nobody needs to do anything. You do the stuff you want to do based but on I what... I need to see now, that. That's different. I need to see that, too. <laughs> but I need to see McGregor fight uh, Khabib. I need to see Jorge fight oh, Nick yeah. Diaz. Yeah, yeah. But they don't need to. They'll do what they're humans with free sucks. will and, and the choice, you know... Uh, uh, Jorge was like, I'm just a working man, so I only have two hundred thousand dollars to put up as a bet. That hey, I'm a working man too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, have, yeah. I don't have two thousand yeah. dollars to, to put up uh, in a bet with Dana. So these guys have the leverage and the and the uh, you know the flexibility to only fight if and when they want to fight. And no matter how badly we want to see these people fight each other, we have no ability to make them. Uh, coming up uh, this coming weekend, Houston, Texas, will be the site of UFC Fight Night. Dennis Bermudez, uh, the very active Dennis Bermudez, taking on the Korean Zombie. Uh, it will be the first fight for both men in 2017. Mm -hmm. However, Dennis Bermudez had two fights in 2016. Uh, the last time uh, the Korean Zombie was in action. It must have been 2015. Yeah, it was, no, no, no it wait, was, it was 2014, right? You would think that, but yeah, no, yeah. it was, I think, <laughs> August of 2013 was the last time, or April of 2013, the last time Chan Sung Jung uh, was in action. What do you think he's been doing? Well, During that time. So he's in the military. He, he was forced into yep. the military. That's the way their country's structured. Yeah. You're, you have to give your military mandatory. some mandatory service. So you go there. You're a professional martial artist. Now, again, when he went away, when I say went away, he went to serve his country. He was 25 years old. Yeah. Now he's 29, in his prime. So you yeah. are his commanding officer, yeah. and you're like, oh, this guy knows how to fight. Let's yeah. get him to teach the guys of how course. to fight. Of course. Right? It's like, okay, what do yeah. we need? To, what can we, how can we benefit? Well, this guy's actually, everybody in here, raise your hand if you've been in a fight. Nobody raises yeah. their hand. Yeah. I'm sure there's some A professional some guy, cage professional, fight. Professional, in a real fight. That's yeah. a real yeah, right. fight. You know what I mean? Where like a high level. Yeah. Again, I've been in fights where the person standing across from me has not spent one day in yeah. inside of a martial arts academy yeah. at all. Sure. Korean zombie, the guy that's standing across the cage from he him, has de 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 <laughs> dedicated a lifetime of martial arts yeah. training. So nobody. So would anybody like to teach this class? And then everybody looks, looks over the chance. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this is the guy that's yeah. going to teach us real mm -hmm. life proven combat. So in addition to that, it's like, okay, what do you, what do you need from us? Yeah. Okay, I need high level jujitsu black belts. Yeah. I need wrestlers. Yeah. I need. Yes. In addition to me teaching you guys this, yeah, I I'm going to be getting yeah, this stuff yeah. from these guys yeah. as well. Because the only reason I'm here is because, again, the way our government's structured, I have to be here. Yeah. I want to be yeah. somewhere around the world. I inside be at of Exactly. Yeah. Punching people yeah. in the face. Yeah. So what do you believe, if you were in that position of the Korean zombie, what are you doing? Clearly, you're monitoring everything. Yeah. So what I find interesting about this scenario or any scenario like this, and there aren't many is he's training and evolving in isolation, right? He doesn't have one of the big, ca he doesn't have any kind of high level head coach where he is, he is the head coach. That can be limiting um, some of, uh, you know, what is it? Well, what would you do? If you're him, you're, okay, I was like, well, I can't be my head coach. Yeah. I have to create a head coach. Or uh, he, there, there have been at different levels. So you look at fighting now, where it is along the evolution compared to any other sport, it's like way behind. It's like hockey of the 70s. Now, of course, their athletes are better, but how far it's going to change. In the 60s, there were uh, player coaches. 
You yeah. know what I mean? So at yeah. this level of evolution, Slapshot. Is you see the yeah, movie great. Slapshot? Paul uh, Newman. Good fights in that yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> is there any? Uh, is it possible to be your own uh, player coach right now? Well, we would say no. We would say you shouldn't do that. But what if it's forced on you? He doesn't have a head coach. He doesn't have anyone. He's the coach. So if you are that guy and you have that ability and you know you're going to fight at the end of it, you didn't choose to go away for three or four years. You are a fighter who's this has been, you know, you, it's mandatory. Uh, you've got to evolve. And how do you do that is going to be unique to you. And that's what I'm going to find interesting to see. You're going to watch all the fights you can see. You're going to try things out in real time. You're going to try to evolve the game, but you're going to do it independent of John Kavanaugh or Ferrari. Zahabi or any of these. You'll study what they do, sure. but you're going to have to find your own answers. That could be limiting and it could be bad, but it also different is always good. If people don't understand what you're doing, if they if you don't act the way that all their training partners do, it's hard for them. So that there are advantages and disadvantages that is going to make it cool. Again, but he's an intelligent guy. You would expect that and the, we know that he has the affiliation at the MMA lab. Is he calling John Crouch? Okay, so let's just say he doesn't yeah. speak speak English. Well, the path is there. Okay, Ben Henderson. Does Ben yeah. Henderson speak Korean? Little, Maybe if he yeah. doesn't, yeah. get his mom yeah. to translate. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we need to have a dialogue with John Crouch to say, okay, can you set a curriculum for me? What are the things yep. that I need to do? You have that conversation. Yeah. You yeah. implement those things, okay? In addition to that, I, I still need to be sparring and getting g good work with the best guys in the division. Well, I'm 145 pounds. Are there any other South Korean fighters that could be considered top 10? All right, do Ho Choi. Yeah. Let's yeah. call this guy. They were for, they trained together in the past, so he can come in. Maybe. Come in. Exactly. What you're describing is just flat out refusal to fail type of problem solving. So, so some there are people people in the world who will say, I would like to do this, but I don't have the opportunity, or this would happen, but you know, if I just got to... Then there are people in the world that no matter what the wall is, they find an answer. And this seems to be one of those guys. Because a, even at the highest level of athlete or thinker, somebody would say to you, you know, hey, you cannot train for properly or on the way you're um, accustomed to for the next four years because you're going to be in the army. And some people, even at the high level, would go, oh, damn, I'm screwed. And other people would go, well, so that's a, an issue. What can I do? How can we make this work? Yeah, how do we make this work? Well, I have this thing called Skype. Can I have once a week meetings with a head coach? I have this thing. I have the internet. Can I analyze what's going on? Can I see uh, maybe I'm going to go and read technique things and just go and learn? I mean... The example that I was going to use is, uh, what's his name, beat Rich Franklin, uh, Evan Tanner. Evan Tanner, a long time ago, taught himself to fight with DVDs and became the UFC champion, uh, middleweight champion of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't, lost to Franklin. Yeah. Uh, yes, lost, lost to Franklin, Franklin. sorry. Um, you, you couldn't do that today with DVDs. But if you're already, you know, a... a you were an A plus enough to fight for the title. In today's settings, you're a B minus because you haven't got to evolve. Can you go from B minus to A plus with whatever is at your disposal? And there's debate over whether or not that's possible, but fighting, as excited as we get about how far it's evolved, it's actually not evolved yeah, very far compared to what it's going to look like in 2025. So is it still possible? All of these issues, this nerding out that we've just done over this fight is what makes it interesting to me because... Uh, it would be easy to say, well, if you haven't been able to change with the times right now and haven't been able to be in the gyms, you, there's no way you can make it work. But I have a feeling that's not what we're going to see. Especially when you look at his background, and we know he's skilled everywhere. We know that if the fight goes down to the ground or before it gets to the ground, he's going to try to do his best yeah. to wrestle and he's going to do his best to submit. He's going to do his best to sweep. And one of the things we love from him is he's yeah. a come forward striking type of guy. Does he remove that from the formula, considering the landscape of the, especially the division, it's all about striking right now. When you look yeah. at the guys at the top of that division, especially, it's all about foot movement, it's all about setting traps, it's all patterns, it's uh, uh, offbeat uh, patterns as well. So how does he incorporate the things that he's good at into this new landscape? Again, we have to theorize, it would all depend on what you have access to. If he does have access to do Ho Choi once a month or on the phone once a week or for long Skype periods to discuss strategy, then do Ho Choi gives him that insight. Do Ho Choi has that sensitivity to when you're coming forward. You just have to look at that one off the level change that he knocked out, uh, uh, I forget what. Uh, what uh, Tavares? Nope. Before that, 
Cecilia. Uh, Le- Sam Cecilia. You look at that game, you know, this guy's coming in and manipulate back. But there's also a difference. Uh, we knew that, and we've seen it before against Johnny Hendricks, that Stephen Thompson could just make you your, your old school wrestling game obsolete. But Tyron Woodley has the ability to close distance faster than he expected. So, and so does uh, Dennis Bermudez. Dennis Bermudez is a deceptive, you know, uh, he, he chews up distance a lot quicker than you're accustomed to. So that's a challenge. So you're going to have to get up a couple times. Duho Choi's also, again, very, very good at that. And they are friends. So does he study uh, fighting? Does he study other people's games? Does he have an ongoing <clears throat> discussion, training, meeting, uh, analysis sessions with other fighters during these Is that a must? Years? Do you believe that, you know, I know his, his scenario may be unique, but do you believe that the rest of the the industry, they need to be analytical in order for, we're seeing everybody's good. They're, you know, the, the, yeah. the women that, you know, only introduced to the UFC not that long ago, everybody is climbing faster and faster and faster. So are, is everybody going to have to be on the same page? Is everybody going to be, I know what you say that unique is different and they're all, we're yeah. all going to see yeah. that through, yeah. you know, we're all individuals. So yeah. we're all going to have some sort of uniqueness at, at some stage. But is there going to be a point where, because it doesn't seem like mixed martial arts is still treated, and before they perform, it's still not treated like professional sports. Yeah, in, in different ways. We're getting to the point, the, uh, the athletes in the top 20 in two years are either going to be highly, all of them, highly intelligent, yeah. or the type of guys who are very, very good at being led and following instructions. So you'll have two, you know, it's, it's styles make fights. The, the psychological styles we'll be facing are the highly, the dominant Cruz type minds. See, Stephen Thompson's one of those. There's, there's so many of them now. There's so many guys. You know, Frank Mir was, a, was an uh, early adopter of the, of the st- uh, strategic thinking. Uh, and then the guys who are soldiers, the guys who have brilliant coaches who figure them out, program them to go in, and they go and execute. And we will see those two uh, matchups of how people look at fighting. Because nothing in between is going to work. If you're not smart enough to be able to be sensitive to these differences and the threats and stuff, you're, you're not going to get to the top 20. So how... It's going. The fascinating thing is the length of time that we're missing, and the fact that there are any number of things he could have done. We don't know what they are, and so what this forces us to do is theorize the possibilities. Speculate. Yeah, speculate. <laughs> yeah. But based on knowledge. So you know, uh, I was on Rogan's podcast um, on Sunday, and at the end of it, uh, Eddie, who everybody, he's a wonderful dude, but but Eddie uh, goes off onto these. Um, these conspiracy theory concepts and you have conversations with him and he'll treat any information as if they're equal or the real information is less valid than his weird outlandish. So, and you know, if you talk about space or you talk about flat earth compared to the fact that we know the earth works is round, uh, you have to dispel so much to make that work. Like your cell phone works because there are satellites yeah. and satellites work because the earth is round. <laughs> yeah, yes, of but if, if you have to, if you dispel that, this is just voodoo. It's magic. How does it work? Can't you, I don't can, know. Can't you create know, just, a different uh, technology in your mind? So, see, well, it doesn't can, work that way. You can, but here's yeah. the problem. When you start having those debates, uh, the the shit that you'll come up with has been disproven, you know, yeah. Yeah. sometimes thousands of years ago by science. And what science is is an evidence based uh, learning. So you go get evidence, you learn, you study, you try to disprove that evidence, and then over time you have the best information possible. So that's what we're trying to work with here is what we know by studying what we've seen, by looking at the possibilities, and you go, wow, it's so it's so incredible. There's so many variables, and you marvel at the beauty of variety and all these possibilities, and we are okay, okay with that. It's ex- it's exciting, in fact. But the opposite thinking is all theories are equal regardless of how yeah, much education know. or knowledge you have. And it's not exciting to be wrong, so you have to defend every idea that you have. It has to be right. Wrong is bad. Wrong is good. Wrong, be, uh, or being wrong or, or failing at something is very good. It allows you to change and grow. But if you don't think that, you go, well, forget it, man. The zombie moves forward, bro. And you know, if he takes those shots from Dennis, he can... That, none of that is true. We've had four years of nonstop change from both men. But, the, uh, but at the same time, there's no 
guaranteeing that when he gets into the cage that he doesn't just move forward. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So it becomes yeah. one of the possibilities. But it is only a possibility in four there is and there is some states and some circumstances in which you revert back to whatever is natural. Yeah. But it is natural if I hit you for you to give me a, give me your back. That is natural, and you train that out of you. The reason jujitsu works is whatever your instincts are, yeah. we penalize you for making those those choices. They're so wrong. Over, they're, they are incorrect. So over time, fighting is about learning to correct the things that cause you harm and pain and failure. So. Uh, do you get to a point where, well, bro, this is just how he fights. There's no such thing as just how you fight. Just how you fight is close your eyes, bite down, and throw your hands. And if somebody hits you, you give up your back because that's what human beings naturally do. So the act of becoming a martial artist is changing and overriding your incorrect instincts. So in this case, old school uh, Korean zombie are all the incorrect instincts. Moving straight towards a guy with one of the best blast doubles in the division uh, in a world and believing that the double doesn't work anymore. It doesn't most of the time. But when guys are exceptional, it still does. And now you move towards him, he took you down. And well, my jujitsu will submit him. Nah, his base is so good. Mm -hmm. So the old school way that the Korean zombie fought was not the right way to fight Dennis Bermudez. So has he changed? You would hope so. But if you're one of the things that uh, the Korean zombie has in his arsenal, He's familiar with the Tenth Planet system. Not everybody's familiar with that yep. system of play yep. or combat. And the guy was able to submit Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Dustin Poirier yeah. is a yeah. savage yeah. on the ground. So if you can lock up a Darce choke on Dustin Poirier and you can land the twister yeah. on Leonard Garcia, yeah. you yeah. have some skills sure. on the ground yeah. that other people don't have an understanding of. And that brings us back to Eddie. Yep. Uh, uh, his unwillingness to accept the structures of jujitsu is what created his system. He's like, you, well, you have to play guard this way. No, I don't. No, I don't. I can innovate the, any way that I want. And it's that innovative thinking that allowed him to create an entire new spider web of game that allowed this guy to, to, to put a, a spine crank twister <laughs> yeah. on another human being to t t uh, tap him out, which is why Eddie's such an incredible genius. But it's that same thinking and not accepting the structures is now dangerous for this guy as he spreads ideas like the dinosaurs didn't exist and the earth is flat. He but did, it, did he say that? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, He's he does. trolling people. I don't know. I don't know. I love him dearly. I, I admire him a great deal. And in at the end of that podcast, there was some debate. Joe just got up and left at the end. Joe's just and then after he gives everybody a hug and says thanks for coming, but he's fuck, right the fuck out of here. Um, but, Over the dinosaurs. Yeah, it was flat Earth in this case, or the fact that space wasn't really space. It, it's actually a small thing. But but that thinking, the the denial of of accepting the structures of what we call reality yeah. allowed Eddie Bravo yeah. to create an entire universe, a beautiful universe of the martial arts. And uh, that has made him, uh, you know, given him his life purpose and defined him and given made him a living that he feeds his family with. But it's also allowed him to not accept the structures right. of reality that we all live in. It, it, it is incredibly fascinating. And then to watch his friends who you see them get stressed out because what they're feeling is that their friend is going so oh, he's far normal, from, intelligent, and yeah. except yeah. for this. But they see him going so far from reality that they think not only is it dangerous for him, but they think it's dangerous for the viewers. There are millions of people watching this, and this guy is saying the earth is flat. And some of the people will believe it and, and defend it. Uh, who, who defended it? Yeah, lots of people. Uh, well, some people are just like, Eddie, you're crazy. I love you. And well, What I, about the fossils around the world yeah, that they found? They have an explanation. If you keep looking for explanations that counteract the facts, and science is as close to fact as you can get. Science is a lifelong study of things with the highest yeah. level of people dedicated their whole Proving lives to Proving the it. wrong, but too, it, and, the, it, and the opposite yeah. of that. Exactly. And seeking to be wrong. Yeah. You have to yeah. seek to be wrong. It's such a gift to be wrong because now you've learned something new. It's one of the great things in life. Damian Maya told yeah. me, he said, when jujitsu, because jujitsu is ever expanding. Yeah. He said, you know, you're, you're coming up with new yeah. concepts. And Eddie's and, part of that and, expansion and forever. He said, the thing, Damian Maya said, that well, when it comes down to the theories of jujitsu, oh, I got a new theory yeah. about playing yeah. this game because they have to be proven. Yeah. He said, it can't just be in training where you do. He said, yeah. these are things that have to be proven 
during the yeah. fire of yeah. combat. That's the yeah. only way things become a truth. Because if it's if it doesn't work, then we don't fucking teach it. That's bullshit. Yeah. yeah well, the twister works. Yeah. Twister you know works. what I mean? Yeah, the, exactly. Uh, and uh, so, but it, it really is a fascinating thing. You see, and the issue is, if you. Uh, uh, um, expertise gets undermined with one incorrect thing because somewhere people think if you're an expert you should be right 100% of the time Mm -hmm. or 100% of experts should be right. So if one journalist is proven to be dirty some people are like they're all dirty. And if one scientist is bought to defend that global warming is not real, then people say all scientists are not to be believed. And if if we say, you know what, man, Holly Holm's gonna beat Ronda Rousey and we're wrong, people will be like, you don't know anything about fighting. Uh, The study of things is a a lifelong, you know, acquisition of knowledge and new knowledge and incorrectness and and making adapting to that incorrectness with new study. Uh, And so the the reason this conversation's interesting if anybody actually thinks it is. They, they do. Is uh, because the Korean zombie is undergoing this process on his own right now. This is usually a process that is saved for coaches. This is usually a process so cool. that's saved for a room full of people with a sample size of 100 at ATT where four coaches go and they, they learn the truths. This guy's on his own with a bunch of army guys trying to Old school out. way. Yeah. That's the way yeah. it's like. You mentioned Evan yeah. Tanner. It's like, okay, let's get some yeah. DVDs and learn how to fight because yeah. well, we're where do I find a jiu-jitsu yeah. coach? Where yeah. do I find a Thai mm-hmm. boxing coach? Well, I found a Thai boxing in this coach in this town, and two hours away, yeah. I found a jiu-jitsu coach who's only a blue belt because he mm-hmm. learned from traveling yeah. long distances. So it's all these things because of the experiment done by all these greats of mixed martial arts, these fighters do now have that luxury. Yeah, it's true. And uh, that's everything. That's when you look at, you know, this. This was all done now for, you know, yeah. That's, this if, you wanted this to, if you wanted to learn uh, Bruce Lee's theories, yeah. you can't go to yeah. a Bruce Lee Academy. You have to buy one of yeah, his books exactly. from back in the day. Exactly. Are we still going to uh, Dan and Asante? That's the plan. April. When? April. April yeah. I think April 9th. And uh, what what uh, gym is that in? Uh, it's Gamma. In Mon- Gamma. Yeah. Phil, Phil Jelena's place yeah, in Montreal. So we'll so. go out and take Dan and Asante yeah. a couple of days. And we'll get it right from the top. But th- what's happening here is principles, not rules. There are not rules. You know, if, if you think there's a rule that you must move your head this way and do this, and I know you think that, I'll, I'll penalize you for sticking with that. Principles are, are things that are undeniable. The example I use all the time is gravity. You know, gravity doesn't care if you believe yeah. it's true or not. It's a, ru- it's a, it's a, a principle of life. It's a, it's a fact of life. Now, Eddie might disagree with that, that gravity is not real, <laughs> but gravity is real. And uh, there are principles in fighting and there are principles in developing fighting, but there are not really rules. There are rules for the moment. And so, again, uh, we have spent a long time meandering in and out of this fight, but but these this is why these fights are interesting. This is the level at which you can look at these fights and carry over concepts into life or science or anything. Because, and that's what we're doing. That's what I mean. If it's just we're looking to see if somebody gets knocked out tonight, that's that's a. That's a distraction. That is an en- uh, a short-term entertainment. We'll get a little shot of dopamine I love in, our, that. in our mind. It's fun. Seeing somebody get yeah, kicked in the head. Some, holy Ooh, shit, I can't believe what happened. Stuff. When when um, Donald Cerrone, who is a killer, oh. a, a, a fantastic martial artist, when he falls down at the end of round one, and you're like, oh my God. And then he like, gets back up. Yeah, and then he gets back <gasps> up. Exactly. And then you, that would then, never happen to most yeah. people. Well, that's what Jorge said, too. He was like, hey, you know, he got up in the second, too. Yeah. Finished yeah. body shots, yeah. head shots, and Donald got up. And you don't always get to choose what you're going to show in a fight, but Donald got to show something special in his own right. But yeah, you get that little bit of dopamine and it's exciting. The problem with that is as soon as it's over, I need it, it again. I need the next one has to be even crazier. I'm, who's, you know, and you've well, got to go but further. But are you trying further. to understand? Because uh, So I see that. I'm like, oh my yeah, God, yeah. this happens. Yeah. It's like, why did that happen? But How that's does, curiosity. Like... You need curiosity and you need curiosity mixed with tenacity. So you're curious and you must have the answer. Again, that goes right back to What's happening when you're alone with, you know, a hundred soldiers, yeah. some of no, which know a little judo yeah. and one guy yeah, boxed yeah, yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. And you have to find the way to evolve in an ever-changing landscape. While Dennis Bermudez and Dennis is, Dennis is like, he, he lost to Jeremy Stevens in a fight he was winning. Yeah. And other than that, I, I don't think has even lost in the last three years. There might be one other. Dennis was just blowing through people. Chael Sonnen saw Dennis in a room and said, that's a different... 
uh, Dennis is the real thing. You got to go back, and you can't study old Dennis. Yep. So he's got two losses in there Jeremy out of Stevens, ten. As you pointed out, yeah. Ricardo Lamas, yeah. who's challenged top for the top perennial the top. contender, out of ten or t- nine or ten fights, maybe more. Meet ba- and beat Max Holloway. Yeah, yeah he's he's he on. Beat a, Max Holloway. Yeah, beat Max Holloway. Holy shit! So since since um, losing to Diego Brandao, nine uh, and two and eleven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, like that. Yeah. So you have to come out of out of a camp somewhere, laying on a cot. Training outside, perhaps, or in a tent. We know he spent time, yeah. uh, the Korean zombie, for the camp. It's like, yes. okay, we're getting ready. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to, um, to where, where, uh, John New Couches. Mexico? Is it yeah. New Mexico? Yeah, something like that. Is it New Mexico? Where's yeah. Arizona? Yeah. I can't remember. It's but it's in the desert. The lab. It's in there. Yeah. Uh, the truth is, it has been. I remember saying his hearing that his his um, time was up eight months ago. Right. Six or eight yep. months ago. Yep. So he's been to, able to come back. And what that again? That layer now you add whatever he did or didn't do or changed or developed or whatever feeling because you developed Misha Serkinov. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have. He, we talk about how high his ceiling is, how unlimited of growth he still has potential. A lot of what he developed in his striking was just developed playing, you know, the sp- light sparring, regular, uh, you know, mid-level yep. guys. And it developed him a sensitivity to, you know, feeling and distance and what's kind of happening in there. So whatever the Korean zombie developed of that in that same environment yep. where you don't have kind of a head coach. But then he got to go back now and for seven or eight months, John Crouch could go, yeah, yeah. this is good. Yeah, yeah. Holy crap. Let's let's keep that going. By the way, you need an underhook there, bro. Like, uh, you know but what it, I mean? Don't, don't you Fix think, the little things. Sure. Fix but don't you little- think that's been going on over the three years? It's like, okay, I'm going to set the video yeah. camera or yeah. whatever, my phone. Yeah. I'm doing my thing. And then, if, <laughs> and then at the end of the day, yeah. you send the thing to yeah. John Crouch. He's like, this yeah. looks great. This looks great. Yeah. You need to work yeah. on these if, things. If possible, depends how deep you want to go. It depends how much of a problem solver you are. It depends how serious. Some guys will just be like, I got tougher. I got stronger. I made my body better. I figured out a few little things. And uh, some of my other stuff deteriorated, but in eight months, we'll fix that. So this is a cool fight. It's not a card with a whole bunch of marquee yeah, fights. Or, or any really other marquee fights. But fi- as a fight, this one is really, really cool. Glendale, Arizona, the site of the MMA lab. Uh, some of the other fights on this card, and, and oh, you are not lying. Uh, we have Dennis Bermudez, Chan Sung Jung in the main event, uh, Alexa Grasso undefeated, taking on Felice Herrig, Ovince St. Pru taking on a newcomer. Um, yeah. You know, honestly, yeah, like, when you s- look at it, we won't get to do five rounds again for five days. Yeah. And we could, we can talk about any of these, but time is our limited yeah. issue here. And I'd rather talk about Holly and Duran uh, Dammy, or yeah. I'd rather talk about Derek Lewis and Travis Brown. I mean, and it's not in any disrespect to these athletes, because after this card, it's just a shortage of time. After this card, we might look at some, one of these athletes and go, oh, my God, look how much. Yeah, exactly. True. Look how, yeah. And that's that's what you're hoping for with these cards. Because yeah, you pointed out Holly Holm, Jermaine Durandamy, uh, headlining UFC 208 February 11th, so not this coming weekend, the following weekend. Yeah. And there's some some solid card, uh, solid fights on here. The return of Anderson Silva taking on Derek Brunson. That's interesting. Is Anderson Silva going to fall victim to what we've seen BJ Penn and some of these aging guys? Is this it? Is this the uh, what we saw of Andre Arlovsky? Is it really the changing of the guard of some of these mixed martial arts legends? I know Anderson and Silva, he had that technology yep. before everybody else, but ego seemed to get yeah. involved. So has he gotten rid of that? Also on the card, Glover Teixeira, Jacare taking on Tim Boach, my man Ryan Flair, uh, Ryan, Ryan LaFlair, LaFlair, wicked. Uh, 12 and wicked. 1 taking on Juan Carnero, Ian McCall, another opponent. Uh, did he get uh, Did he get he's, one? He's on the, he's on the card. He's got a new, he's got he's got new, new opponent. Good, good. And then Wilson Hayes, uh, Yuta Sasaki. And when you talk about action, Dustin Poirier, Jim Miller. Oh, yeah. And See, fi- this is yeah, good. And, and good. Yeah. Uh, Philip Nover from New York taking on our guy, Rick Glenn. I love the, yeah. I love the fights. Uh, uh, Rick Glenn. Yeah, Rick yeah, Glenn. Man. Be Philip Nover's going to be Glenn. good. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, Glenn is really yeah. rangy. We, that guy's been looking good for years, and you know he's getting stronger all the time. Um, uh, when I was uh, chatting with Brendan Schaub, he would uh, talk about the business and pay-per-views. And I know it comes up in our conversations, it comes up in people's all the time. And although I care about the business doing well, um, I started to look at this. If you go in at, and you look at Michelangelo's David, you go into a, a museum, you yep. get to see Michelangelo's David. You only have limited amount of time. Will you go look at some of the other sculptures and paintings or whatever might be in there? You might. 
or you might just be like, I gotta this stand is one here. of the great things, I, I gotta, gotta stand, stand here. here and absorb it. And after you left, you fucking wouldn't talk about how clean or dirty the bathrooms were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody said, how was, how was the museum? And how was oh, Michelangelo's David? You'd be like, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. I waited in a line for an hour <laughs> yeah. and I paid way too much. And I think that place is going out of business because they don't seem to be doing great business. It's fucking Michelangelo's <laughs> David. And that to me, when we start talking about analyzing the business or pay-per-view numbers or what these guys said, it, it's just, yeah. Like you got this art sitting right here that you paid yeah. to come see. Why are you talking about the cleanliness of the bathroom? Room, or why are you talking about what the flooring looked like in the place? Or why are, why are you theorizing with the attendance of people that came to that museum, you're not sure if they're doing very good business? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I see this uh, uh, kind of thing. Uh, so th will this sell a lot of pay-per-views? Is it good business? I don't care. Yeah. I really don't. True. true. <laughs> but as much as I am excited about all these fight cards that are happening in February, it's our trip to, to Las Vegas yeah. for the UFC that's going down March 4th, UFC 209 at the T-Mobile Arena. And you want to talk about art, Tyron Woodley, Stephen Thompson main event. Yeah. Co-main event, Tony Ferguson, Khabib Ooh. for the interim title, Art. Oh, the yeah. fight after that, Alistair Overeem, Mark Hunt, Art. Lando Venata wow. on the card. Todd Duffy on the card. We're going to be in Vegas. Ed Herman, uh, Igor Pokryets. These guys are going to beat each other up, and we are going to be there to witness yeah. this the incredible combat yeah. art and the beauty of the mm -hmm. martial arts. It's true. Um, and, uh, yeah... That is going to be you know pretty I mean? spectacular. That is going to be pretty the spectacular. The night, two nights after you win your award. Ah, ah you're going to win the award. Uh, I do want to shout out um, uh, David August Suits. They're making me a, a dinner jacket. Yeah, nice. Like red, red velvet. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brady Ferguson also yeah, yeah. Uh, said yeah. there's a picture here. Uh, Rory McDonald, beautiful yeah. art uh, yeah. at he, Brady, Ferguson. Fork At Forkison, F -O -R -K -A -S -O -N, Brady Ferguson. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Brady, for sending that here. We're gonna put work. it up here. Uh, yeah, it's cool. That's art. That's art. art. And that's what it comes down to. And uh, as we pointed out, we're going to be in Las Vegas to see Tyron Woodley all and Stephen we'll Tone. We're going to be there all week. The MMA awards are going down. I'm sure we're going to run into a whole bunch of personalities. I don't know if this is possible. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'd love to be able to sit down with Chael Sonnen and mm -hmm. your boy Michael Bisping and, and yeah. really get some nuggets of mm -hmm. what's happened over their career. And I know they're, you know, you can say they're at the top of the, yeah. you know, when you think about their respective divisions, respective mm -hmm. organizations, they are literally both yeah. at the top. Yeah. of their game right now. Uh, hey, uh, Chael or Bisping, if you happen to be watching this or if somebody's friends with them and they're watching it, uh, send it to them. Uh, we want to hook up with you guys that week. You both have my number. So uh, let us do a sit, me and Ram Dean do a sit down with you. That's it for us. Another edition of Five Rounds. He is Robin Black. Got to thank Chase and Jeff and everybody else over there. I see Sarge sitting over there. New guy. I'm going to wave to you as well. Intern. Uh, I, I'm John Ram Dean. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys after the weekend, uh, the return of the Korean Zombie and Dennis Bermudez, Bermudez. All the action going down in Houston, Texas.